There's been a lot of talk amongst, you know, wrestling fans, journalists, podcasters, what have you. You know, ever since all the stuff has come out with, you know, Janelle Grant, the uh, the lawsuit, you know, with the sex trafficking allegations, with Vince McMahon standing down as the executive chairman of WWE. Um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, w will um, TKO get rid of other people there that were, you know, you know close associates of, of Vince McMahon? And one name that, you, that has been thrown around a lot that they might want to get, pe people think that they might get rid of is Bruce Pritchard. Um, people, people, some, there's a lot of people out there that think maybe they'll get rid of Triple H and maybe a few other people that were close to, 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 to McMahon. Um, before it came out, about a month, it was a month prior to it coming, all coming out, um, Kevin Dunn left. And Kevin Dunn, that was a, quite a shock that a lot of people saw him as being a lifer there. He'd be there forever. I think he was like the longest serving employee there. Maybe Howard Finkel was number two, rest in peace. But um, Bruce Pritchard is one that's known as very close, um, very close to Vince McMahon. I don't know if you say they're necessarily real friends, but um, Bruce, Bruce Pritchard is very much a Vince McMahon guy. Um, and some people, the, the, the detractors of Bruce Pritchard would maybe refer to him as, as Vince McMahon's lapdog. Um, there was a tweet, I think it was around last week, uh, from Ronda Rousey. And Ronda Rousey said that Bruce Pritchard is basically Vince's avatar. Um, if he's still around, then he's Vince will still have a hand in running, running the business. And that he was still running through... He Vince was running through things running through things by Bruce when he was quote-unquote gone. Um, and with... I, I mean, I, you know, she's speaking her mind. And I don't doubt what she's saying, you know. I don't think that's untrue. Um, Pritchard... I, I, mean, I mean, Pritchard's something else because, you know, looking at, looking at Pritchard's um, his, his history of, of, you know, organizations that he's been in, he's very quickly been able to move up the ranks. He did so in TNA. He did so when he came back to WWE back in... when it, Going back to 2019 time. Um, but with this, um, what I want to do, I want to play this audio clip, and this is from a guy that was um, a talent. Uh, he, he played the character Simon Dean in WWE, but he was also he was known as Nova back in ECW, and he he really does lay into Bruce Pritchard. He doesn't like him at all, and you'll hear clips of a lot of our talent out there that who worked with Bruce, Bruce Pritchard. They did not like him. They did not have good interactions around him. Um, but I want to play this clip. And then at the end, I'll um, I'll give you my take on it and what I think. So here we go. I detest Bruce Pritchard. <laughs> I'll tell you why I detest Bruce. I, feel, I, I have empathy towards Bruce. Bruce's last run in WWE. Oh, he's is he still in TNA or no? No, oh, that's a shock. And his last end in WWE ended when uh, he apparently pulled a gun on a writer. I heard he pulled a gun on a writer's assistant and he got rid of him. Whatever. They were wanting to get Bruce. Bruce's function in WWE always to me was it was described as. He's the McMahon's, like, pet dog that laughs at all their jokes and says, ha, 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 good one, or... You're, like, the 20th, 20th person who probably told me the same thing. So that's what he did. He treated... I don't like Bruce for once. Well, here's the difference. Bruce Pritchard, I would like to probably give a bullet to. Dr. Tom Pritchard, I would fucking take a bullet for. I would take a bullet in an arm or a leg for Dr. Tom. I'm not going to die for you, Doc. But, uh, <laughs> I, I love Dr. Tom. But Bruce Pritchard... It was his way that he dealt with people, how he talked to them, how he handled them, his perception of individuals, uh, just his interaction, watching him deal with people was so fucking low class. Like, and give so, some examples. The way he would talk to talent, dude. Like, he would come to OBW with his sunglasses on. And well, he would, first of all, he would never look you in the eye when you, shake it, when you shook his hand. And that Bit is the number one pet peeve. If somebody does that to me, I will squeeze her Special hand as hard as hand. I will say to you, look at me, motherfucker. But uh, he would do shit like that. He would talk down to them. Uh, just treat them like shit. I mean, I just saw it so many times, dude. And I'd be like, but this guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> I remember filming a skit one time with Boogeyman. Where I was supposed to list... Me and Crystal. Supposed to list up this lid. Boogeyman's head is on this platter. He's supposed to scare me all this shit. So we take it in one take. And Bruce is directing it. And he's like, I, I don't know. I don't like it. Do it again. So we, we had to do it again. We did it the exact same way. We did it like five times in a row. And it was, he was just fucking with us. And, uh... At the very end, Stephanie comes over and goes, what's taking so long in this? And Bruce is like, well, you know, it just, it just isn't really how we want them to do it. And Stephanie goes, and she looks right and she goes, it's Simon do it? And he goes, yeah. She goes, all his stuff's perfect the first time. Let me see the first take. 
shows it. He goes, and she goes, it's perfect. He goes, well, that's what I thought, too. I just yeah, want to didn't get along. Fuck you, Bruce. Stephanie and Bruce. It was just the way he interacted with people and treated them like shit. He would always talk down to me and just treat me like a dick for no reason, dude. For no fucking reason. Uh, the only compliment he ever gave me one day, we were in the hallway all alone. It was after the Royal Rumble. I went in the Royal Rumble, like, spot number two and hun- number three. Hunter and Ray were in there. <laughs> and we did a little skit. They bounced me out. I got kind of got a pop, got over and shit. I go in the back, and he comes up to me and goes, you really do make the most of every minute you're in the ring, don't you? I said, absolutely. He's, and he just walked away and was going like that. That's the only compliment he ever Back gave. Back handed compliment. But, uh, wow. I just, his interactions with human beings. Look, Bruce Pritchard was in WB for how long? A million years, right? Yeah. And they, fi- they couldn't get rid of him. They wanted to get rid of him for years, and they couldn't. So they did. Finally, when he gave me the excuse. Then he goes to TNA and has a worse run there, and he got rid of him. Is he so valuable that he's back? Now, he might not. I felt bad for Bruce because his wife had some difficulties over the years. And, you know, I do respect him for being a journeyman in the business and all that shit and paying dues. Brother Love was an awesome character. But getting to know him as a human being, if the business had eventually down the line turned me into that, fuck that, man. I would much rather be remembered as a good businessman, a banker, a college grad, a good father, there we go. There we go. So, um, with that, I mean, Pritchard, um, I, I mean, you hear other stories, you know, you hear, I've heard X-Pac be real critical of him. I've heard Scott Steiner be real critical of him. Um, I, I, I get the feeling that, that in the wrestling business, there's probably more people that dislike him than like him. But then there'll be plenty of people out there that will, guess, just take the high road and not say anything and give their opinion. Um, yeah, it is what it is, and that's fine. Um, but I think Nick Aldis had some issues with him as well because, um, I, yeah, I remember this now, yeah, because Bruce Pritchard had been critical of him, um, from when he was in TNA, and, and then he and Aldis contacted him a bit, and he thought it was quite shitty around the time of a pandemic that he was, um, you know, really devaluing his, um, his contribution to wrestling. Um, so I can understand Nick Aldis being a bit upset by that. Um, the thing about Bruce Pitcher, though, I mean, he very much, he seems like one of those dudes who plays the game and gets ahead. Um, looking into his Wikipedia record, and, he, and I know he can't go every, go by everything that Wikipedia puts out, but um, going from his time in TNA, it said it was reported on October 7, 2010 that he was hired by TNA to presumably replies to the role he had in WWE working as a backstage agent. And he was kind of, yeah, he was an agent and producer. He was known as being a really good producer. He had a name as being a really, for being a really good producer. Um, a year later, he took over the head writer role from Russo. And Russo felt that, because Russo says that he was the one that put in a word to Dixie to get, for Pritchard to get the role, to get a job in TNA in the first place when he really needed a job. And then a year later, t- Pritchard takes over the role of head writer. I think mean, Vince was very upset by that. He felt that Bruce used him and, and kind of backstabbed him. But then you get to May 2012, Pritchard's promoted to Vice President of Talent Relations to replace Terry Taylor. Um, but then in October 2012, he was promoted to Senior Vice President Programming and Talent Relations. So that's three, three buddy promotions within in two years. I mean, how many people do you know in any job, any line of work that have free, get free promotions within two years? Most people would probably won within two years. Two of them are quite fortunate. But free promotions, you've got to be, you know, playing the game and, and, and you know, doing a bit of and and, and and using people to your advantage. That's how I see it. But I guess that didn't work because I guess karma works out quite, quite well, doesn't it? Because in the end... Um, TNA released Pritchard, <laughs> and this was about ten, nine months later, July seventeenth, two thousand and thirteen. So that was him gone. Um, he got he go he comes back to WWE, and this was in two thousand nineteen. So he joined the creative team, but then it was two months later it was reported that he was going to be senior vice president, pretty big position, right, to be in. Then October time, he was announced to take over the executive director of SmackDown. But then later on, Heyman, he, he was removed from his doing it on doing that on Raw, and then Pritchard took over that. So Pritchard, he, he gets ahead in the game like he, he's, a, he's a player. He is a player. But I just wonder now, though, with this stuff with, him, with McMahon, um, you know, you know now this is, he's gone. He, he won't be coming back. I highly doubt it. And I really don't think I can't see I can't see him surviving this. 
I mean, this is a civil case, but it could potentially become a criminal one too. Um, so it doesn't look good. And you've got Pritchard already. He did a, you know, his podcast he does with Conrad, the boy Conrad Thompson. Um, there, you something to wrestle. Um, and he he's already he was he had I think it was so, shoulder tricep surgery. Um, he's in a sling right now, and he's he's not he's not there at WWE. He's not working right now. Um, and they mentioned the stuff to do with the allegations, the lawsuit, and he's just basically just saying Pritchard, hey, I'm not going to comment on that. Um, the thing this, about Pritchard, I mean, you know, the whole thing, you know, Ronda Rousey, you know, Bruce Pritchard is, is the Vince avatar. You know, I feel that, um, I feel Pritchard must know some stuff about Vince. He can, he knows where Vince's bodies are buried, so to speak, in some cases. Um, and it's all come out about Brent events saying that he was showing all these pictures of the girls and the naked pictures videos to the guys and the crew and the production team, whatever. You, you would think that maybe if he was so close to if, if Bruce was so close to Vince that he would have been one of the people Vince was showing these things to. Maybe. Um, so I don't know. I mean, Bruce might have some dirt on him himself. I don't know if Bruce doesn't. Does, does he have any NDAs on him? I don't think so. But he must know, he must really know the true nature of Vince McMahon. This can't be a shock to Bruce. You know, Bruce was there. Bruce maybe probably produced a lot of that stuff, that seediness with McMahon and the, all the stuff about the, 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 the relationships with the divas, making out with them, Trish, Stacey Keebler, Don Marie, Candice Michelle, just to name a few. There's probably a few more. Um, so he'll know, he'll know really what Vince is like. Um, but, um, I, I'll, I'll show you, take this video, this on Bruce, uh, Vince Russo, Vince Russo's channel, and him and Stevie and Ben Haman are speaking about, wondering if this is maybe a bit, if, if maybe it, this is kind of put on with this whole thing, with the, apparently the, sh the, in a slang, the injury, but I, I guess maybe implying that Bruce is milking this a bit, um, and, you know, they're, they have speculated as well that, <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, when it comes to like WrestleMania week, the week of it, could, there's, there could be some drums, bombs dropped on not just even more stuff with Vince, but maybe other people within the company. There'd be a few other things out there. I mean, you've already got somebody that was a, a woman that's a senior writer, producer left, you know, and I don't know if she's just want to wash her hands of the company. She's so disgusted by everything or she knows some stuff and she wants to get the hell out of there, you know. But anyway, I'll, I'll start playing this clip and I might pause it at some point and give my take. But he, here we go, though. Here you go. If, why does he need to be on a podcast right now? Nobody needs to be more faceless, nameless, and small after Ronda Rousey threw him under the bus as the avatar than him. And if they're already squeezing ace, then I'm sure that uh, Mr. Carano, Mr. Dunn, your uh, appointment is uh, 2 o'clock. Let's go in this room here. And it's he's going to... Knocks on Kevin Dunn's door. Yeah. Change, yeah. Right? And, they're and, good. And, they're good. <laughs> and, I, and, I had, and I had a laugh, bro, because he's sitting there with his arm in a sling... <laughs> Stevie, since when was your arm in a sling enough to take you off the road? Are you freaking kidding me, bro? He's got his arm in a sling yeah. and he's obviously not you can go on back the to road work. with the company. And you're 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 not gonna tell me that Endeavor Endeavor didn't say, well, Bruce, yeah, you need the surgery. Go, 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 go get it done now and heal up real quick. Bro, I doubt very much if he's coming back to the company. Well, he learned from the best, the neck brace to learn the steroids. Yeah, trial. exactly. That's the exactly. Whole thing. exactly. Is it yeah. true? Is this a Mandela effect, by the way? That Vince on camera, there's, there's a few people saying that after the trial, like Vince tore the neck brace off and said, I'm Vince F. And McMahon. Or was that in private in, in the tower? There, there, there was an urban legend going around that. Yeah, I'd heard something about that similar. I think it was Shane Douglas that said that, but I don't know. I don't think he would have done that on television on, on i think that would have been a private thing and maybe that was around the time i think would have shane douglas been in wwe he just became the dean douglas character i'm not sure but um that whole thing i mean vince with the neck brace i even sensed this even as a kid when i saw old footage of that when vince is coming out the car it's him and linda they're all smiles it's all you know vince with the neck brace on they're going to go to the court it's very much a game and they're putting their game face on and um but 
you know, Vince survived a lot. I mean, he beat the federal government, but again, with this stuff, I don't think he's going to beat that. But again, though, they, they could be onto something. P P Pritchard could be milking this, though, this whole thing about, you know, the, the shoulder surgery or whatever. But Vince, after the trial, not not on the steps or anything, but ripped their neck yeah. brace off and said, I'm Vince Evan McMahon or whatever. Did he, yeah, did he well... do that or is that like a weird Mandela effect then? I do remember the the a story about taking that off, but I don't know that that catchphrase there. But it wouldn't surprise me that the uh, multiverse that we live in, we have uh, the Vince version of Vince more than we have the old version. And, and by the way, just not that I, I saw what Bruce said. What? <laughs> It's so weird. Like, hey, they told me I can do the podcast and do whatever. But hey, here's a little advice for everybody out there. Don't if your company is uh, getting legally whatever, don't talk. But well, welcome to my podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what? Is that is that even at the most veteran level being inside the bubble and not staying small? Like yes. why? Like it's to me that th yeah that well that that to me seems is like. Um, what was the true crime thing where they thought they had the guy and then he was on the fucking mic and they got him? They know they got me. Oh shit! Like that, I was in the room oh, privately. The room, the shit, yeah, yeah. Sir, I forget his name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that. that's what this feels like to me. Like you know your accomplice. You know where the fucking bodies are buried. You know they're coming for you. And I'm gonna go out there and do a, an interview about wrestling, and I can't talk about it. You're just like saying sub in subtext. Please come fuck me up. I want a tattletale. I got a heavy conscience, and I'm trying to put on this kayfabe face for what? For some wrestling content going into WrestleMania when you could be looking at five to seven years as an accomplice for sex trafficking and fucking uh, covering up, uh, you know, who knows how many other indiscretions, right, that they've got on there? Like, dude, that that when I see that that episode even dropped me, goes guilty conscience. Yeah, well, let me yeah. let me just follow up. This is where Bruce, because he's been so into the bubble, and a lot of guys and girls have been for years and decades. Think about the stipulations in pro wrestling. Think about what you can do. I may, I always make a joke. You can commit a felony on TV as long as there's a camera there. You're not going to jail. But there's a deep seated kind of disconnect where you can commit a felony, run somebody over your car. You can have a slave for, for, for 30 days if you want a match. You can do all these different things that bleed over into the locker room, into real life. Vince McMahon can literally sexually assault divas on camera, which truth is stranger than fiction. It mirrored what was really going on. So are these things that are in the bubble? Yeah, that's an interesting point. And you know what? Also, to add to that, it's kind of like that thing that wrestling, it's in its own little world, that people outside of wrestling don't get it, you know. And a lot of times, these are the same people that belittle wrestling, you know. They'll, they'll say, like, oh, no, this is fake. But then when you watch it, they're when you watch it alongside with them, they talk as if, like, it's still kind of real at the same time. It's weird because it's like, I think wrestling gets a lot with away with an awful lot you know i think like you know when you had the whole brawl with punk and the elite you know because it you know you know people look at wrestling who aren't in it and think oh is this real is this not real i think that's part of the reason why the, all those guys didn't end up going getting arrested going down to the police getting questioned at the police station i think that's part of the reason because again people look at wrestling oh just that world where it's fake and they're not really hurting one another and I think either was even, maybe that's even part of the reason why, you know, when you think of that crazy thing of, like, when Arden, Anderson, and Sid Vicious, Psycho Sid, were stabbing one another, for real, for real, this is not an angle, for real, in a hotel, they were a drunken fight, bar fight, in a hotel in England in the early 90s, and none of the, like, did both of them, nothing happened, you know, they didn't do jail time, like, that's weird, but that, that's a, a little thing of the, in the wrestling world where maybe, you know, to add to Stevie Richards' point, when you all these crazy storylines, that life imitates art, and you start to, in their weird minds, get away with it, thinking that they can get away with, 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 with these heinous acts. In their mind, empowering them to do things, because there's no court in wrestling that's really, you know, kind of any consequences. I, I just wanted to put that out there that they're they're kind of not hypnotized, but uh, they're indoctrinated. 
to believe these aren't real crimes and mm. I'm not going to get in real trouble. That's a great point, Steve. You go ahead, Ben. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with all of that, that they can, they've lived it for so long and gotten away with it. But now when uh, the real pressure is applied and reality comes crashing through that outer shell where you thought you were protected, mm, uh, with Ace's statement alone, <laughs> how his lawyer tried to flip it, right? And there's going to be more and more and more of that because everyone podcast-wise, whether it's the salacious stuff, and we've said this already, that we're blue in the face, the feds don't raid you for that type of shit. Not usually. Not when they're taking files. You're not going to be keeping files on your NDAs. Well, I mean, to some degree, maybe. But there, there's plenty of other shit that we've talked about with stock cash-ins. And all those people surrounding them all had stock options and cashed in quarterly. Every Insider other quarter. Trading? Uh, knowingly, four and five days ahead when the when the fucking news came out so they they had that's insider trading 101 so forget about the stuff that sells the newspapers that's where the real charges are coming and we haven't even gotten to that yet the road to wrestlemania is about to be a bumpy one because those people who have a vindictive uh, uh bone to pick with them are sitting on their nukes and they're going to wait until it's the worst PR time ever, which will be the week before, the week of, and the week after WrestleMania to drop some fun, to either hold somebody's feet to the fire to settle, and when they don't or they don't give you the number they want, fire nuke one, <laughs> and that off it's going to go, bro. And then everyone's going to get to WrestleMania in Philly and go, they're not going to be talking about any matches. They're not going to be talking about anything. They're going to be talking about the, story. the piss tape that dropped or whatever you know, it is. You know, what I would do? you know what I would do? Either at Fan Access or the Hall of Fame, I would I would make the arrest there and perp walk them through Fan Access or perp Super walk them right the yep. Hall of Fame. Wow. wow. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, these guys, they they know their shit, you know, and – and I think for a lot of what that guy Ben Hamin is saying is that there's more to this. There could be, you know, was it securities fraud stuff, insider trading, and, and he's mentioned, you know, Paul Levette that doing that, and the, the you know stock options they sold that a few just a few days, just happened to be a few days before all that stuff came out with the allegations. So I mean, these guys they really know. I mean, it even goes back to the whole thing with you know the whole thing of um you know the announcement about you know with Netflix and and the Raw partnership. And then, you know, they were on CNBC, Ram, uh, Emmanuel, uh, Ari Emanuel and, and Dwayne Johnson and Nick Khan. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, this stuff, like, yeah, I mean, you're in this weird little world in wrestling, aren't you? Where it's like, you know, you, 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 they, they've gotten away with so much, you know. Vince let us all know what he was really about. I mean, it wasn't just like Vince was an actor acting. That, that Vince is that crazy guy, but he's even way worse backstage behind the scenes. That's what most of the people in that company would would tell you. And um, you know, all the stuff with the divas, all that stuff that was going on on screen was probably going on on was it, that happened off screen as well. And Pritchard must have known some stuff. You know, Pritchard used to joke on his podcast. I remember he used to make that joke, and I think it was when he was. Vince was talking about the, 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 the diva Jacqueline, black woman. And Vince, he would put the Vince voice on and he would go, Chocolate titties! It's my be best Vince impression. And these are the kind of things that they would joke about. You know, and okay, that's one thing that, you know, Pritchard and Vince are joking about that and, and being all, you know, and, you know, obsessed over a woman, their beauty, whatever. But... Um, and their assets, <laughs> but you, you know it's it's one other thing though when when Pritchard potentially knew what was really going on there with other divas, and it was all that stuff, the pressure, coercion, um, making them feel well. You know, if you don't do this with me, you'll be done. You'll be out of a job. And there's much more other stuff out there that Vince did. There was like was something that they reported about one woman he coerced, pressured, and having oral sex with him. There's a lot of other stuff out there, and I believe. I, I can't believe that Britt Pritchard just think thought that, that oh, Pritchard's going to be like, oh, that's not the Vince I you. I don't think Pritchard could say that because that's just total bullshit. And apparently, you know, uh, Bruce Pritchard told Vince McMahon back in, um, it was 2010 when he joined TNA, and he said that Vince and Linda were separated for years, you know. 
So how long could have that been? You know, because I believe that they were still together going back to 20... Uh, sorry, 1999, 2000. That was around the time Russo left. But something must have happened where she caught him or she caught him out with, with something, with some other woman, and she snapped and she said, that's enough. But they decided it would be best for the company PR, for optics, that it appears that they're still together and in in, in married together. But I don't know with Pritchard. He doesn't seem like a good guy to me. Doesn't seem like a nice guy. I... I, t I I just find myself believing everything what you know when Simon Dean Nova says, what other people say about him. Doesn't seem to be a pleasant guy. From what you hear, doesn't seem to be very like a guy with creative or writing. He's maybe good at producing backstage backstage segments, sure. But um that's one thing though. I mean, Ronda Rousey does definitely has a point there. You know, if if he is essentially Vince's avatar, it's still gonna be Vince McMahon ideas that, 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 that you you'll see on WWE programming on Raw and SmackDown. But who knows, though? Maybe Pritchard's not got that long to go. Maybe they'll just wipe their hands of him and be done with him and anyone else that was real close in that, you know, like Vince McMahon inner circle from before. Um, but that's my video there on all that stuff with, with, with Bruce Pritchard. Um, but feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what your thoughts are on all this. And that, But that's me for now. So thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Bye.